Hey everyone, my name is Harper Fenler. I'm the cocktail resident here at Food 52. And today in cocktail class, we're talking about the Manhattan. What's up? I'm Harper. Nah, that doesn't feel right. <laughs> I'm the drinks dude. Hey, I like booze. So, let's talk about a Manhattan. Dating back to sometime in the 1870s, we find that the first actual recipe is printed in a Gotham Gossip column around 1882. That original recipe says some kind of mixture of an American whiskey with a Italian vermouth. Not a French vermouth, an Italian vermouth. But that's about it. The rest of the specifics the actual founding of the Manhattan is still up for debate and probably will be forever because there are so many stories surrounding it, but most of the stories do circle around the Manhattan Club in Manhattan. Some of them actually circle around Winston Churchill's mother, but that's been largely debunked. All right, we've got our bourbon here. I'm also gonna grab, there we go, a little sweet vermouth, Angostura bitters, I'm also gonna get some Luxardo cherries as my garnish and an orange, also for garnish a little later on. Let's talk about the foundation of Manhattan, American whiskey. So for a Manhattan, you are using an American whiskey as the base. Now, what is an American whiskey? The most popular ones are either gonna be bourbon or rye. Now, what are the differences between bourbon and rye? With bourbon, it is 51% corn in its mash bill. With rye, it is 51% rye in its mash bill. Both of them need two years of aging in new charred oak barrels. Contrary to popular belief, bourbon does not need to be from Kentucky. It can be from anywhere, but it has to have those two years of aging. It needs to be 51% corn. Another thing that I get asked really often about a Manhattan, what is vermouth? At its simplest form, vermouth is fortified and aromatized wine. Let's break down those words. Fortified, it's got another spirit in there, whether it's a neutral spirit or some other grape-based distillate, fortifying it a little bit. So it's a little stronger. It stands up against the ages of time a little bit better, especially after it's been opened. So that's fortified. Typical ABV in a bottle of wine is coming around 13, 14%. We have our Koki Vermouth de Torino coming in at 16%. Aromatized, it's got a bunch of herbs and spices in it to give it a little more flavor. So those are the basics of vermouth, at least sweet vermouth. But one thing I will make note of before we move on is please, please, please refrigerate your vermouth. Date it and refrigerate it. Yes, it's fortified. Yes, it's coming in at a slightly higher ABV, but this is not forever. Just because it's at 16% does not mean it's totally stable. It will still oxidize, it will go bad, and you're going to ruin your drinks if you're using old vermouth. So that's bourbon, that's vermouth. Now our third major component are Angostura bitters. This special little bottle. Angostura and all other bitters were originally made by apothecaries. They were digestifs, things to settle your stomach. It is worth noting that Bitters are usually pretty high concentration in alcohol. If we look right here at this Ango, it's coming in at 44.7%. So the reason we use bitters just as dashes is because they are a high concentrated alcohol. So when you're using that, just be cautious of it. So if you've ever had a bitters and soda, bitters and ginger ale, you're gonna notice some of the major tasting notes of Angostura, and that's why they work so well in a Manhattan. It's a lot of baking spice notes. You're gonna get allspice, clove, little bit of cinnamon, nutmeg. All those flavors go really well with brown spirits like bourbon and the other herbaceous notes and uh, spice notes in a vermouth as well. Last part of a Manhattan is going to be our citrus garnish. So with a Manhattan, you're usually gonna see a little bit of a twist on it, either orange or lemon. Since we're using bourbon, I prefer using an orange twist. If you're using rye, I would maybe go with lemon. Might still stick with orange. The reason being, orange simply pairs better with 
bourbon. With rye, you have a little bit of a higher spice note, so it's able to stand up against the peel of a lemon and some like the brighter soap notes you might get from that. But with bourbon, it's a little warmer, has a higher inherent sugar content, and so it pairs a little bit better. So as you can see, the building blocks of a Manhattan are pretty simple. It's three ingredients and a couple of garnishes. So if you go to a bar and you need a Manhattan, it may not be the specific bourbon or the specific vermouth, but those are gonna be the building blocks. American whiskey, Italian sweet vermouth, bitters. So these bottles I have in front of me right now are the ingredients that I like for my Manhattan. And I'm gonna show you how to make that now. So I'm gonna grab a mixing glass, a julep strainer as well, and a jigger. Let me tell you why I picked the Old Grandad 114. Old Grandad 114 is bourbon, but the 114 refers to its proof. Now a 114 means that it is 57% alcohol, which means it's an overproof bourbon. The reason I'm going with an overproof bourbon is because I'm pairing it with the Cokie Vermouth di Torino. The Cokie Vermouth di Torino I like a lot for a couple of reasons. It stands up really well to a higher alcohol bourbon. It's really lush and the spice notes are a little more subtle. The bourbon's allowed to have its rich oak, its little bit of heat from the overproof, and it's allowed to have some of those other baking spice notes, the vanilla, the wood, things like that. If we used another vermouth that had a higher spice content, such as, say, Dopo Teatro Cokie, it's a little dark, it's a little heavy. There would be a lot of competition all happening at once, and we would lose a lot of the subtlety of the flavors. This finds a sweet spot in between both of those. I'm going to take my old Grandad 114, and we're gonna to to do two ounces of bourbon right into our mixing glass. I'm gonna take one ounce, of the vermouth, there we go. Now the last thing is our Angostura bitters. One quick note about the Angostura bitters is, since this is a newer bottle, I'm going to add maybe an extra dash to this Manhattan. When it's a new bottle, those dashes are gonna be a little bit smaller as opposed to a bottle that's say halfway down. The dashes are gonna be a little bit bigger. So we have our Manhattan built in our mixing glass. Now we're gonna grab our glassware and our ice. So, we are gonna be serving it up. Now, a lot of people do like a Manhattan on the rocks. That's totally fine. The one thing I would caution you is if you are doing a Manhattan on the rocks, make sure that you are taking your dilution and stir time into account. Dilution is a key part of making a cocktail. If you think about some like nicer whiskeys, bourbons, Irish, scotch, all those things. Oftentimes, you have a little bit of a glass of water next to it. That's to open it up. It's the same thing when making a cocktail. A little bit of water, a little dilution is gonna open up a drink. That's why we stir a drink. We want it to be cold and we want that dilution to happen. So if you do like a Manhattan on the rocks, just take that into account because that ice in your glass is going to continue to dilute your drink. So I just added a couple more cubes of ice just because the ice has moved down a little bit which means I can now get more contact with ice. It's not to dilute it more, it's just to make sure that it's getting cold from the top to bottom. Now, if we look at the glass, we do see it beginning to get cold. So we know that our liquid is cold. It's also getting to the color we want at this point. So now we are going to strain. Last things we're going to do is garnish our Manhattan. So. I'm going to get my cherry and go ahead and drop it right into the bottom for a little treat at the end of the drink and get a nice fat swath of orange to express over top of the drink. Now when we're expressing this peel over the drink, we don't want to do it directly on top of the drink. So I'm, I'm a little off, a little above the drink. I'm going to express with the peel side towards the drink. We just wanna let the oils fall on top of it. That way we know it's nice and light. You can get it on the nose, but it's not just citrus oil that you're tasting. You can add it as garnish if you want. You can set it aside. It's up to you. Me personally, I set the oils on top. I leave the garnish on the side. And that is my Manhattan. Old Grand Eye 114, Cokie Vermouth de Torino, few dashes of bitters, stir, serve cold.
it's really nice. You get a little bit of the alcohol from the high proof bourbon over here. Again, 57% alcohol is gonna sink through, but it doesn't burn because we have a nice balance with the vermouth as well. Nice bit of spice notes kind of flushing back, that little bit of orange on the tongue coming through. And again, right at the end of some of those baking spice notes from the Angostura as well. That little bit of clove, little bit of allspice, little nutmeg, it's really nice. So that is my Manhattan. How do you like yours? Do you like it with bourbon or rye? Do you have a one that you're specifically in love with? Do you like a different type of vermouth? up on the rocks. That's the beauty of a Manhattan. You can change it however you want to fit your palate. But I would encourage you to try this one and then let us know what you think. In the meantime, thank you all for joining me in cocktail class and until next time, cheers.